All right, how's it going, everybody? This is Ismorta, and this is episode 40 of my custom Kingdom Death Monster campaign, Lantern Year 12, and we're doing the largely the hunt phase. Uh, it's the hunt stream, so we're doing the departure from summit phase, and then the hunt, and then we'll do the arrival of the showdown and setting up the showdown board, but the showdown will be a separate stream. All right, so before we begin the departure of our survivors, there is one more thing I want to do uh, during the development phase, as well as make a slight correction what happened during the uh, lovemaking, um, the intimacy event. So I'll start with that. So for intimacy, I had forgot that um, o uh, Oko had destroyed generals. So he couldn't be a father. So that le le leaves me only with uh, another male, which is one of the children of Volva, to actually mate with Volva to create more civilization. And so that's what we're going to do, as weird as it sounds, because the civilization is very small. And we needed to have another heir. We needed to have, t like what kings typically do, you need another male. And sometimes they sleep with their relatives in order to, to try to accommodate that. And that's what I'll have to do. So I did the same bonus. I took the luck bonus off Ogo and instead put it on Jer. So Jer was the other parent. Um, but otherwise, all that was the same. So I've already set up gear grids that I want to experiment with, as well as characters I want to send out. And I'll share that with you here in a sec. Um, the last thing I want to do was Due to the fact that I keep losing resources for stupid reasons, largely from festivals of the settlement themselves, I feel like I shouldn't hoard on to a bunch of resources, right? Um, so even though I was going to try to hold out to get uh, to make the leatherworking set and hold a bunch of leather, the fact that I have another Hands of Heat, there is the chance that I could lose resources again. Actually, it's guaranteed because I'm doing that roll on the table, I will lose half my resources. So I figure, okay, you know what? Let's just go ahead then and burn um, pelts in order to make another full set of the Screaming Antelope gear, which would be good because it's the strongest gear I can actually make. That's a combination of four and five armor. And then again, it also gives you that bonus that you could potentially get bonus of strength as well as... Um, Gave me minus one toughness to the beast if you can do a full run. And allows you, if you have the full set, to also automatically activate gear. Which would be great in the case of like Twilight Sword because I realized it was a cumbersome weapon. Um, that was a mistake I made during the, um, the last showdown that we did. Because I forgot it was cumbersome that I couldn't run and then attack. But the fact that I, as you saw, I pretty much owned that fight. I don't think it would have mattered if I stayed in one place and then just attacked. So uh, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. But I need to make sure of that. And so because of that, that influenced some of the decisions I made with gear and people. And I'll, again, I'll show you what that are here in a sec. So I want to make three pieces of gear, which basically is me burning all of my pelts. And then knowing that I wanted to do this, um, I think I would have gotten rid of an uh, extra organ instead of an extra bone. And so I'll use that toward making these three, as well as burn also a scrap. Because I need a, well, let me get out to validate what I'm doing. I needed, in order to make the screaming bracer, screaming coat, and screaming leg warmer, I needed three pelts, which I have, two additional hides, which I have two monster hides, and then a bone, but I'm gonna say I lost a uh, an extra organ instead of a bone that I can use it toward this. So that means I'm getting rid of one organ, three pelts, and two hides in order to make three pieces of gear. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll go ahead and deduct those. So I'm losing my monster organ and two monster hides and three pelts. What that means is, that was actually the hardest stuff to make. 
as far as pelts, as far as leather. So that means when I fight the Screaming Antelope, if I just get an additional pelt and a spiral horn to drop, I can complete the entire set, which is awesome. All right, so I made these three, and I'll go ahead and equip it on this person. Boom, boom, boom. So everyone has full, complete set of stuff. Um, and I, I remember I still have to do a barbaric as well. That while well, the the principal event, um, light in the darkness, whatever it's called, that gives everybody honorable if they don't have it, as well as a plus one permanent speed. Just this departing group. Um, so I'll definitely do that as well. Here in a sec. So before I, you know what, I'll go ahead and do that before I forget. So these four people get honorable and plus one to permit the speed. All right, so Volva gets plus one speed and honorable. She already has honorable. Joy, plus one speed, already has plus one, so plus two speed. And honorable. What honorable means it's a disorder that uh, that you cannot attack in the blind spot, otherwise you're knocked down. So if you attack in the blind spot, you're knocked down. And I can double check, but I believe that's what it said. Bliss gets plus one speed and honorable. So it's only the blind spot, which is only directly behind the monster. So if it's worthwhile, I think I'll still do it, even though they get, you get knocked down. Otherwise, yeah. Jer has had plus one speed, so that goes to plus two. And honorable. Okay. So now I'll pick up the uh, camera, and I'll zoom in and let you know what's happening as far as the strat with these people that I'm sending out. Um, and then I'll prepare the gear and, and we'll do the departure bonuses. All right. I didn't realize I made the mistake of not putting my phone on silence. I hope no one calls during this also. I keep forgetting because that's what, that's what has been caused some of my unplanned doing part one and part two or certain streams is because of doing that. So we'll see. I just think there's a high chance of someone calling me because it's Easter weekend, but anyway. All right, so this is what I have. So I took a bunch of gear out knowing that we're finding an antelope that I can sh largely do very well against. I'm, again, I'm just not prepared yet to do a level two because I don't have sickle or make sure I have ways to get more insanity um, for surviving the hunt. As well as you want to have four people with that could absorb hits, as well as have a way to block to reduce the bonuses that the level two monsters get from damage and speed. So I'm kind of like this in between period that I'm superior to a level one, but not quite yet competent in level two without losing people. It's not like losing people is a bad thing. It's I can right now. I'm so low in people. I actually can't afford to lose anybody. Is the problem because I know I'm going to lose people from Nemesis encounters potentially. Okay, so the four people I'm taking out is Volva, who was uh, now the new person with, with the uh, Twilight Sword. Joy, who is one of the new kids, who is an identical twin. Bliss, I mean a fraternal twin. Bliss, who is another, the other twin, also a savior, who gets a permanent red affinity. And then Jer, who is the other parent. So this is basically the family that's going out. Right. And so how do I redistribute? So I took all of the monster tooths out and basically I put in Lucky Charms because I want to be able to farm more materials off the antelope is the idea. And so you notice Jer has a huge bonus to luck. Also using the guitar has a, will have a huge luck bonus. Whereas the other two characters will have a slight bonus to luck having a Lucky Charm. So they can do nine or tens, 
whereas Jarek could do it on like a six or something. And then Volva um, finally has normal stats again, but I want to try to sneak in and get that Twilight Sword hit to keep leveling the proficiency. And then you'll notice that now I also have a five, five blue affinities, meaning that I can trigger Unshakable on the blue charm, meaning if I ever draw a trap with this person, I can roll a d10 and on a six plus discard the trap. And then I also moved Blood Paint to the person guitars because now I can use both guitars and get the paired bonus with both, meaning I can attack with a guitar twice and have it be speed five, unmodified from personal speed, which is gonna be just stupendous. And so that's why this person I, I made sure had the biggest luck, because basically what this means is, is I don't even care what someone's toughness is. I know that Antelope has basically, you can crit everywhere, and so I can crit farm with this person. And then Boss Mendy can even give me a bonus Two people speed. So if I want to get rid of traps with King Spear, and like if I find a traps with Ice Circlet, I can get rid of it with the King Spear, because I'll potentially be able to hit three times. And then if I crease Spear with Guitar, I can do an insane crits, who has really high crit chance. And then Lucky Charm, I gave the other two people just a slight bonus to, to crit if they go after it. And then of course this person, because they can run around and potentially get their dash refunded, they can use it for free. So if this person needs to run around and do bandages, can do so. And then of course, I want to be able to slam with um, either of these people if possible in order to get the minus one toughness bonus. But then with this person, I can also get bonus to their own strength as well. And then with, um, lastly with Volva, I make sure I tanked as much stuff as possible to add to Insanity because Volva doesn't use any actual armor. She only uses Insanity for all damage that she takes. So that's why I'm doing Frenzy Drink, Stone Nose, scre uh, Screaming Leg Warmer, all ways to get more Insanity, as well as the Rawhide Drum will give everybody Insanity. So that's the general strat that we're doing with these people. Um, spec to let's try to farm as many materials as possible off this antelope so that potentially I can finish the whole set before I fight the hand again, is the idea. Cool. All right, so now I need to do all of the departure stuff. So I've already done the plus one, the speed, and to uh, um, honorable, so I can remove the bar barbaric. That would just a placeholder to remind myself to do that. Now I'm doing the departure stuff, which means what are all the bonuses that trigger on everybody? So I know everyone does get plus three to survival, and then it's whatever else is on the gear grids. That's say depart, okay? So I'll go around the horn, and I'll also, when I do that, also update everyone's gear what it is now. Because I changed gear around from the typical grids, moved some people around who are new. So, all right, so I'll start with Volva. And we'll just recalculate everything. So, he, she's only using the Twilight Sword, but I also gave her a Cat Gut Bow. That way, if she's cumbersome and there's something at range, she can still attack. But I want to make sure I hit once with the Twilight Sword, for sure. All right, so her armor now, I'll, I'll write it on here, but it doesn't matter because all damage goes to insanity. So I got two, 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 everywhere other than the hand and, uh, I'm sorry, other than the waist and the head. So I got two, 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 and then the, her primary weapon, I'm gonna say is the Twilight Sword, but you know, if the stuff starts becoming a problem trying to do damage, of course I'll do the cat gut bow to get some damage in. I just, I really want the damage to always have the chance to get the crit. So I want the primary person actually to attack to be Jair, actually. And then 
to use these two people to pick up plants and have this person tank if possible, but this person do damage is really what I want to do. But this person to, to damage once to level a Twilight Sword. Um, the other two don't have prof proficiency yet, but definitely there for support. If I need want to do some additional damage, if dragging out the fight is a problem. Okay, so the sword is speed one, but I add one to speed, but it's cur currently still a slow weapon until I get another proficiency, so the speed is only one, regardless. But the speed bonus would affect the cat gut bow, so it'd be speed three if I used the bow. Um, luck right now is zero. Evasion, zero. Strength of the weapon is nine. With no modifiers. And then accuracy is a nine, is a star, which is a nine minus the proficiency, which is a two, so, it's a, so it hits on a seven. Okay. And then departure, everybody, on arrival people get stuff from the musical instruments, but that's not until later. So departure, um, she'll get three survival, but she can't spend survival, if I recall. The damage gets converted to, and you can't spend survival, but you can still get it. So she goes to eight survival, even though she can't use survival for any reason. And then anything else on departure? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so that's Volva. Joy, looking at gear first. Speed two, plus two with the bone club, so it's speed four. Luck with the club is plus one. So it's a one. Evasion is a one. Strength of the weapon is five plus one is a six. And then accuracy is six plus one accuracy, so it's a five. And then gear-wise, she's got two everywhere. I mean, armor-wise. And then on the part, also gets one survival in addition. Gets an additional two survival. So, so just the parting, she gets three plus two, she gets five survival. What's well, three plus two? Plus, she already had one, so she's at six survival. Okay, I think that's her. I did it correctly. Uh, Jer has the full cat set, so three everywhere. So as before, use the. Uh, we'll, be, we'll have three everywhere, so we got. Three, 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 three. And then weapon wise, this could be used in the guitar. So speed is one, two, three, four, because the pair, and plus one because of the full set, so it's five. Plus two is seven. So that means this guy can roll seven dice twice. So it's definitely the person I want to attack, for sure. Luck is three plus the one bonus, so it is four. So that's correct. Evasion is a zero. Strength is three plus two is a five plus one is a six. So that's still correct. And then accuracy is seven plus one is a six. But I can have better accuracy and strength if I pounce. But I'm also rolling so many dice. All right, so then we got Bliss, who has a Screaming Antelope set. So it has five to head, four to arm, four to chest, five to waist, four to legs. Uh, no other departure stuff here. It doesn't have any other part stuff, just the survival. Um, 
the weapon is the King Spear, which is speed 2, plus 1 is 3. Luck is plus 1. Evasion is 2. You know, now that I look at this, maybe I actually wanted to switch these two because this guy has so much to evasion that if I give him this, he has extra evasion and you're hitting with the bone club. You know what I mean? I might want to switch these two actually. Whereas this one has so much speed that I have a high chance with this weapon of drawing out those traps and reshuffling. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna finish adding this person's bonuses for departure. Um, but then I'm gonna switch the two. Because I feel like this is the person I want to have more hits in order to get rid of the trap, and this is the person I want to be another person that can tank because such high evasion. Plus I want to protect the savior. So let me finish adding this and then I'll recalculate the two. So this person is going to Get rid of calculations. This, this person go down to four. It's like that bonus never happened from the plus two. So if I'm using this weapon, it's three, one, two. Two plus three is five. And then accuracy is a six. Okay, so let's switch these two. Because I think that's the better way to do it. Let's do bliss again and have it be... Uh, the savior is going to be using this instead. So it's going to be two armor everywhere. Well. I mean. Nah. No, I, I, no I, I think that is better. Okay, we'll, we'll continue with. Or strategy that we thought of. I forgot. So Jer got th had five survival. Ed had three. So is it, was is at eight. These two will, will recalculate, obviously. Joy, yeah. Yeah, I got three on top of the one. Right? Yes, okay. So, uh, now using the new stuff, Bliss will have two everywhere. Two, 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 two. But then... The speed of the weapon will be 2 plus 1 is 3, that's correct. Luck is a 1. Evasion is 2 plus 1 is a 3. Strength is a, a 5 plus 2 is a 7. And then accuracy is a 6 still. And then survival, he gets 3 for departure, so he's at 4 survival. And then as the departure bonus gets additional two, so it goes to six. Four to six. Okay. Now it's good to go. Now I gotta fix joy. Three for departure, so that's correct for survival. Um, the gear is now switches to screaming antelope, which is five, four, four, five, four. And the weapon is speed two plus two is a four, which is great for getting rid of traps because this person can discover a trap and then with this weapon, you can potentially get rid of it. Um, and then we got luck one, evasion is now a zero. Strength is a three plus one is a four. And accuracy is a six plus one, better is a five. Okay. All right, 
right, so now I think I, so I did all the departure bonuses, I believe. I think we're good. Because I have a lot of stuff that triggers on arrival, but that's when you start the showdown. Let's do another pass to check. I think we're good. All right, so we are ready to do the hunt. So the hunt board is already set up. Now it's gonna see what's the order of people that I wanna have doing the hunt. So again, I have the problem that I have people without insanity. Uh, they'll only get a bonus to insanity when they arrive. Like this person will get four insanity. Uh, this person will get one insanity. This person will get additional <sighs> four insanity. And this person will get additional insanity. So I just need I just need to hopefully not lose from insanity um, during the hunt is the problem. Well, the, you know, the issue I had last time. So I'll definitely have Volva go here because since she has the most courage, maybe she can courageously get through something. So I'll definitely have Volva go here. So I want her to go second. So maybe I'll go Joy, Volva, and not have Bliss do it. So maybe I'll do Joy, Volva, and then Jair, and then Bliss as well then. So Joy has the spear, Volva has the sword, which I'll show you, I'm using a, a new miniature you haven't seen yet. Um, and then I'll have Jair be third, and the person with the ax, Bliss, be fourth. Okay, so this is the miniature, the, the one that I've created for my previous campaign. That's pretty cool. I like it because it's actually, she's holding the Twilight Sword but has um, actually um, rawhide armor. But it sort of fits. The fact that, you know, wearing some sort of armor and holding Twilight Sword, definitely a better fit. Definitely pretty cool look. All right. All right, so that, that'll be the order. And this order as far as the hunt revealer, because this... The hunts, certain things happen if you're the hunt revealer. Just like certain things happen if your flag is a straggler. All right, let's do it. So, um, like I said, Joy's gonna start her off. And again, what people's survival is, is zero, can't spend survival, six, four, eight, but then in Sanity, we have 5, zero, zero, 13. Now, when I go into, like I said, when I arrive at the showdown, I'll get a bunch of bonuses again to survival and sanity, but I have to get through the hunt is the problem. So really, when you want people to go out, you want them having a, some insanity. So that's why stuff like bloodletting, for example, or nightmare training, which I didn't get, ways that you can just give for people insanity is a good thing. Or like doing the battle paint. Just to give someone that enough insanity to get through the hunt so that when you do musical instruments and, sh and other stuff or like screaming leg warmers, then you give yourself more insanity before you fight the, uh, the antelope. Because, you know, like I said, I had two people die just because they didn't have enough insanity armor defense and then I rolled shitty. So, all right, here we go. So, um, Joy's going to start us off. We got Vomit Pile. I'm just glad I got something other than a dead carcass because I'm so sick of seeing that over and over again. So don't worry about reading it. I just want to just give you an idea what the card looked like. There you go. Vomit Pile. The survivors find the half-digested remains of the quarry's last meal. So instead of finding the body, I'm finding like the uh, throw-up of the antelope. Each survivor may scavenge and gain plus one courage and then roll on the table. Um, so, I think I'll have everybody try to look for stuff.
because getting additional courage is, is also really good just for helping buff people so they can survive this crazy. Um, so we'll start with joy and we're, we'll follow the same order of the, going around this way. Okay. So, uh, joy gets plus one courage and then rolls on the table. So courage goes to one and then rolls on the table. You got a seven. A seven is you find something undigested and eat it, gain one survival. So she goes from four to five. Next up is Volva. Actually, I think it's something to flag who I'm currently doing it on too, because I may easily lose track. Volva gets uh, one courage, so it goes from three to four. Okay. We got a four. Sickening archive all consumable gear. Um, so that actually means that I lose frenzy drink. But knowing that this only person with consumable gear, I probably would not have even attempted it. So. Uh, I mean, that's what you sort of get to. Like, when you look at the card, you can see everything that could happen to your character. But, you know, when you play D&D, &D, when you roll, you have no idea what's going to happen to you at all. So it's kind of like, because the game's super punishing, do you look ahead to see some information, or do you not look at information to not give away the fact that you don't know what's going to happen, you just, give, you just take a chance, you know? Um... Well, I mean, uh, but, you know. And what it says, it's, it says sickening archive all consumable gear. So yeah, I, I lose frenzy drink. So I, that's, that's a consumable piece of gear, unfortunately. This was going to use to give myself bonus speed, bonus strength even though I don't see it yet with Twilight Sword, but also you can just start feeding yourself insanity. But unfortunately, I lost it. So I'll, I'll just continue. Because I originally planned on let's do it with everybody. So, Okay. Um, next, we'll do uh, Jer. Who gets, ah, plus one courage. And roll on the table. We got a one, which is archive all consumable gear, has no consumable gear. And then lastly, we do Bliss, who got a nine and plus one courage. A nine to 10 is the antelope is clearly sick, vomiting up pieces of itself. Gain plus one understanding and a random screaming antelope resource. Awesome. So we do get a resource, and then we'll lose resources with the fucking hunt, right? The fucking hands of heat. Anyway, we get antelope resource. We got a pelt. Great. That's one of the things we needed, remember? Cool. All right, so that's it for this event. Unfortunately, I lost my frenzy drink. All right, so next going to lead us in the battle will be Volva herself. And that we roll on the table. Again, we roll a, a D100, which this is 10s and this is 1s. I'll go ahead and roll here because I'm going to need the book to look up stuff. Okay, we got a 82, because that's the ones, 82. Just 
Looking for the table. Looking for the table, table. Okay, 82. Consuming grass. Which is funny, considering the antelope threw up and maybe it was eating some nasty grass. Who knows? Plus, you know, they go around grass looking for plants. Well, so does a cat. Hmm. Vibrant green grass grows in patches ahead of the survivors. Closer inspection of the delicate leaves reveals they are as sharp as any blade. Oh, this is bad. Sharp grass. Each survivor rolls 1d10. The lowest scoring survivor, or survivors in case of ties, become a straggler. Okay, so before we proceed with anything else, we're determining who a straggler is. So everybody rolls. And it's a d10, right? Okay. Um, but Volva can add her hunt experience to the role when determining a straggler. So I'll start with a Volva. So she got a four plus two, so that's a six for her. For uh, Bliss, we got a four. For uh, Jer, we got a six. And for Joy, we got a one. So the straggler is Joy, because that's the lowest number. Okay. Um, as the survivors carefully pick their way past the verdant hazards, the straggler stumbles into the brush and then they roll a d10. And if anyone had a whip, they could have added more to the roll to save the person. Again, like that's just something cool to, to make if it, with the leather worker is the whip, which is the better version of the rawhide whip. But just so you can save characters from these hunt events. If you have a whip or bandages, these are common things to save your people. Just like having a little bit of survival, a little bit of insanity. Having a lot of courage are all ways to survive during the hunt more effectively. Okay, so I just roll a d10 straight then. I know, I, I need to make this stuff. Just, I keep getting gear to make stuff, and then I keep... I mean, keep getting resources to make stuff, and then I keep... My civilization keeps finding stupid reasons to burn resources with these fucking festivals, you know? So I rolled a two, so that's probably really bad. Um, but it's not a one, so it's not... We'll see. So it's a two. You fall, but manage to interpose something between the grass and your bare skin. Either archive one gear of your choice from your gear grid to protect yourself, or treat this result as if you rolled a one. Uh, so I have to lose an archived piece of gear. I have to I have to archive a piece of gear, meaning I lose it, or I roll a one, which is I get impaled by this grass and bad shit happens, basically. Um, so who was that? That's the straggler, Joy. So I have to lose a piece of gear or bad shit happens. Now I'm at the point now that, you know, I really don't want to lose characters. Um, the harp is a rare, is a hard to make piece. The lucky charm, I believe, just used in one organ to make. Let me check. I might lose the lucky charm. Because the person I want to have farmed is going to be Jerry anyway. So that might be a better thing. Because I can, really cannot lose people. Cannot lose people. Um, yeah, it only takes one organ to make the Lucky Charm. So that's easy to actually remake. Or more bearable, I should say. So I'm going to lose the Lucky Charm. 
God, I've already lost two pieces of gear. Shit. Okay. So I did that, so which meant I protected myself from further danger. All right, so that's it for that event. Whew, that was crazy. The third person to be leading the charge is going to be Jer to this uh, next antelope-specific hunt event. For this, we got grazing field. So we went through grass, we saw vomit, and then bladed grass, and now we found a grazing field. Um, Acanthus leaves sprout from the crevices in the stone ground. The survivors spend time gathering and eating the small leaves. Each survivor may heal one hit location of their choice. Um, it's basically like you ate a uh, fresh acanthus. So you could fully heal one location. And if anyone had a survivor, they could also gain a, a, a fresh acanthus strange resource. And then we roll a random hunt event. So this one is actually two events in one. The worry if you can't see it, but that's what it means. At the bottom, it means roll after you do this. Okay, so everybody healed one, but no one took any damage. That doesn't matter. So yeah, now we do a random hunt event. Basically what that means. All right, so we roll. And so we just got to live through this last one because after this hunt event here, we then encounter the antelope. So we just got to live through this last last bit. That really sucked though I lost this because that was like the perfect thing with Volva because I can keep feeding additional insanity and they get all the bonuses. It's like it was, ugh, that, that really sucked. But I try not to have it that You know, when I'm like when I was choosing a principle, you're deciding between, you know, you're looking at the bonuses. But for the tables, I tend to like you just make a decision: do you want to do this, yes or no, and then see what bad thing happens. So the so for like events, I try not to to go ahead. But if you're deciding on something you're going to purchase, then obviously I look at it. That's just how I play. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm rolling for something. I already forgot. Oh, for the hunting event. So we got a 77. 77 is Sinkhole. I've, I think I've read this one before. I don't know if it was this campaign or, or previous one, but that one, it does sound familiar. A gaping sinkhole suddenly opens under the survivors, revealing a swirling black pool of ichor beneath them. Each survivor rolls 1d10, and then you're determining who the straggler is. Okay, so same deal. I determine who the straggler is, and then this event affects the straggler. All right, so I'll roll for Volva. And again, this is something else that if I had a fucking whip, would have helped ensure people survive in case they roll bad. So that's what I mean. Like, I, you know, I have, I have gear I want to make, but it all involves leather. So it's like, I need to store resources. Jesus. I And again, the reason why I burned through the hides was because I knew with hands of heat, I'd lose half my resources. So I didn't want to lose stuff. Plus, this is good anyway, because this is a really good set. And that it would be good for someone who has a cumbersome weapon. So, I mean, it's it's good. So that's a five plus, plus I'm sorry, it's not plus two, it's plus three. Five plus three is an eight. Because you add the hunt experience, or her hunt experience is three. So she got an eight. Uh, Bliss got a six. Jer got a seven. So currently the straggler is, is, looks like it's going to be Bliss, potentially. And then Joy rolled a three. So again, it's just Joy. Joy just stumbling around. Doesn't quite know what she's doing. So straggler is joy. So let's make sure it only affects one person. Sinkhole. Each straggler rolls 1d10. 
And then, uh, and then again, if someone had a whip, they could have added to the roll, which they do not have. But I definitely want to get, like, I want to get a sickle, I want to get a scythe, I want to get a, again, a whip, and I want to have a way so everyone going out has a little bit of survival and insanity that they can burn just to help get through these fucking hunts, man. Okay, so now I rolled the 10. Which is an eight. That's a good roll, hopefully. Um, so you are dragged to safety, terrified, but unharmed. Phew. All right. So we avoided bad shit. And now we catch up to the monster led by Bl Bliss. And we start the showdown. We made it. We lost a couple pieces of gear, but we made it. Really losing the... Uh, Lucky Charm wasn't a huge blow because that's only one organ. But losing the uh, Frenzy Drink was a blow because in order to make that, you have to use a lion testicle. So that means I have to farm the lion again and then hope it drops to get that wet that again, unfortunately. Oh, man, that would have been huge on her because like if you add five more insanity, then that's mean that's like two armor. You could, oh man, that really sucked. Which just means that maybe I want to go back and farm the cat, but potentially it is another choice. All right, so now we set up the showdown. Before I set up, though, I'm going to do all of the arrival bonuses that I alluded to before. All right, so for arrival, everybody gets one insanity and one survival regardless because of the musical instruments. And then certain other people get stuff based on what they have. And then I also add an additional um, two cards for Acanthus, but there's only four cards max. So we'll have max Acanthus plants in play, which will be eight. All right, so let's go around the horn. So Volva is at the max survival is eight, so that's already capped, but re remember she also can't spend it. And then what else does she get? She gets. Three insanity, four insanity, five insanity. So she gets five more insanity. So she goes from five to ten. Okay. And then everyone also gets a plus one strength token because Volva has red fist also. Everyone does get a plus one strength token, which I'll add to them once they finish the card. So it gets plus one strength. Uh, next up is Bliss, who gets uh, plus one survival arriving. So it goes from six to seven. And then gets one insanity. Um, I believe that's it. Plus one strength token. Jer. Has a stone nose, so gets additional survival and insanity. So looks like it gets two survival and two insanity. So it goes from 13 to 15 insanity. And then survival's already maxed at eight. And then lastly, again, and a plus one strength token. And then Joy gets three insanity plus the music instrument gets four insanity. Joy goes to four insanity, so it is insane, and gets. One survival, so it goes from five to six. Okay, and a plus one strength token. So to sum up, we have can't spend survival, 10 insanity, seventh survival, one insanity, 
6 survival, 4 insanity, 8 survival, 15 insanity. So Jair, though, I have to be careful because if he gets the 20 insanity during the fight, he'll be lost forever because of the whale of the antelope. That I do have to be careful of. of. All right, cool. So we've done, we've done arrival bonuses. Now we're going to set up the showdown. This is the last thing. So for the set up the showdown, we'll be getting all of eight acanthus, a bug patch, and then two random terrain, which I've already shuffled and drawn, which is a survivor corpse and a giant stone face. And so I'm down for diluting the bug patch. I just have to remember to not do it with someone with a lot of insanity. So I'll probably do that with like Bliss or somebody. And then I'll have either Volva or, jo or Joy pick up the Acanthus. And then probably someone else who has some insanity but not a lot, like maybe Joy will pick up the corpse. And again, I'll still play it the same way that if there's stuff that I did at least attempt to loot after I killed Antelope, It'll be a free loot because I just think it's stupid that you can't do that. Otherwise, you'd game drag it out to fight to do that. So, and then we have st a giant stone face. So we have giant stone face and a survivor corpse. Right. Right. So. The monster has to go in the center, of course. The Canthus has to go all around with any diamond. And then the survivors start on the ends. Ah. Get the rest of it out of the way because we don't need it. So probably do a similar grid. I'll also use this initially to block line of sight or something. So this giant stone face to be five spaces away from all board edges. One, two, three, four, five. So I'll just go here so I can initially block line of sight. And then the acanthus just has to not be near other acanthus, and then the bug I place specifically four away. Which of course now I can't find, which is awesome. One, two, three. Where's the bug? The bug goes here. Then we have Canthus all around. One, two, three, four. That's what I want to do. All right, so that's what I'll do for uh, the Acanthus. Again, it's a circle. And then the bugs here, stone faces here. And then the rule for this one is six space away from all terrain. So this has to be far away basically from everything. But I could have it be close to the survivors. So I could six away. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, 
One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so I can have it start there. All right, so I'll do that for the, the terrain setup. Now I put up my survivors, which the back wall is actually here. So I could actually have it start super far away so I pick it up guaranteed. I could do that. I add two other acanthus also, and I don't have it to have be part of the mix. So like I could take this one and start back here also if I wanted to. No, because this has to be six away from everything else. Okay, no, I'll, I'll keep the grid. So we have a ring, a bug, a face, boom. All right, so I'm going to have Bliss start here. That way I can pick it up and move because it has a cumbersome weapon anyway. And then line of sight, basically everything here is out of line of sight. So I'll just start, have everyone start back here. Since I could potentially joust with the weapon, I'll have this person start here so I can go full move, potentially. Actually, and I can move this here. Do something like that. Uh, Jer will start here. And then we'll start all four back here. We'll do that. Cool, so I think we are good. I think we are that we may be done. Um with the setup. I think so. We did get one pelt, so now really why I want to drop off this beast is potentially max maximum number of hides possible, and then I want to get one spiral horn to drop. If because I if I get at least get the spiral horn, then I can make the complete set. Which would be cool. All right, so I think we are good to, to rock. So that's the end of this stream. Uh, tune in next episode, and we're going to do the showdown with a level one white lion. <laughs> white lion. Oh, my God. Level one screaming antelope. In the future, we might fight a white lion in order to uh, get a shimmering mane, which counts as two hides, or to get a lion testicles to make another frenzy drink but fighting a screaming antelope should be easy again what i want to try to do is get all the hits in with jer but hit at least once with vulva is the plan wound once that way i can level up the proficiency of twilight sword and get max crits because jer has the best chance to crit because there's so many hits but i can also experiment with this guy who can cancel out a trap because of blue charm, doing unshakable. And Bliss would be an alternative tank. Probably the main tank because it has such high evasion. All right, well, stay tuned uh, next episode to see what happens. Again, this is Ismorda, and thanks for watching.